Hi, I'm Anna Jones, Operations Coordinator at Kirkham Iron Tech, and today we're talking with our founder and CEO, Tom Kirkham. In addition to being our founder and CEO, Tom is a highly sought-after speaker on the topic of cybersecurity, and he's also the author of two number one best-selling books on Amazon, Hack the Rich and the Cyber Pandemic Survival Guide. Thank you for being here today, Tom. Well, it's uh, it's good to be here as always, and and it's good to see you first time on. So yeah, you bet, rare yeah, and uh, just for those of you that know us, you know our clients and stuff. We're passing the microphone around the office these days, and so you get to see different faces and different people put faces to names, things like that. So, what is the topic of the day? All right, Tom. Well, today we have a three part question for you. And let's start with our first question. Can you share with us why or how phishing emails are getting so sophisticated? That's a great question. And not only are they getting, there's a, there's two points to this. AI is mm -hmm. going to make targeting phishing emails at scale. It's not going to, it already has. Yes made targeted phishing emails at scale possible. But let me back up a few years. Most of us remember 10, 12, 15 years ago, these emails had broken English, mm -hmm. misspelled words, bad grammar, uh, the graphics to convince the target that these were legitimate Microsoft or Google or Apple emails, whatever logos they were using, poor quality. They were amateur hour. Mm -hmm. Well, 10, 12 years ago, that changed dramatically. And for those of you that's watching my videos, you know I drill into everybody's head that these are done at scale at volume. They send out 10,000, 100,000, a million, 10 million emails at the same time. They're, they're not targeting you for most of you. Mm -hmm. For most of you, they're not targeting you specifically. They don't know who you are. They don't care who you are. They're playing a numbers game and they just need somebody to fall for the con job because that's what phishing emails are about. They're, they're strictly a con job. The more they can convince you, pull off their Ocean's Eleven or their focus con, like in the movies, the more likely it is you're going to fall for the attack, whether it's ransomware, keyword logger install, just, it, it just the list goes on and on and on. But now, as I mentioned earlier, AI is a game changer. Mm -hmm. A year ago, they began testing it globally, <clears throat> and we saw one come into our office and we've been targeted for years, naturally, because we are in the security business. Uh, but that took a lot of manual work, manual investigators on the criminal side to understand the relationships in the company, who works for who, what's their role, things like that. So that, that took human beings. And then they would craft emails manually that would appear to the target, especially brand new employees, because without exception almost i don't know if you've gotten one yet anna but without exception within a week or so or a few days of changing your linkedin status or something like that mm -hmm. uh our employees get a targeted email but that was that's done manually the automated ones that everyone has to worry about now i don't care don't think you're too small there's no such thing don't think you have data that no one's interested in there's no such thing there's mm -hmm. lots of ways to make money off of everybody uh, from a criminal perspective. But now with AI, they can go out, scrape LinkedIn, scrape, scrape the company website, see who works for who and what their roles are, and craft the email on the fly automatically per email to make it appear like it's legitimate. Right. Now, think about that. How, does, how much does that raise the likelihood of their success, the, the hacker's success? dramatically dramatically yeah so historically it's been around 95 percent and this has been true for the three or four years past i haven't seen the numbers for 23 yet but it's been around 95 percent of successful hacks are due to human failure and most of those are 
falling for a con of some sort, whether it's a pop-up that says your computer's infected with a virus. Those are generally speaking con jobs. You know, if it does, if you're using Norton and it's not a Norton pop-up, it looks like it's for Microsoft. That's a con. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm expecting that 95 percentile to go up last year and it's going to continue to go up to 96 97 percent as they gin up these ai generated broad scale volume targeted phishing emails so right. that that that's the problem and 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 if you think you're too smart to fall for these don't because mm -hmm. there has only been one person in the company that has not fallen for one. And we simulate attacks on us every week. Yeah. We need to see how everybody's doing, make sure they know what to look for. Just be suspicious, stay vigilant. Uh, but even I fell for one, one time. And sometimes all it takes is a coincidence. I just happened to be working on my Google security settings. At that very time, I get an email from Google saying, Hey, we see that you changed your security settings. Click here to review them. And I fell for it. I blew past all my training. Uh, I'd like to think that I'm somewhat of an expert in the industry, but uh, because I was working on it at the same time, it, I, I didn't even, it didn't even register with me. You know, if you get those emails, then you're not working on it. You, you can pretty much know it's a scam. Right. But right. I let my guard down. And so don't think you can't be fooled by these. There you go. Well, that leads into my next question. What is the impact on businesses or organizations when they are compromised by these phishing emails? Well, it could be anything. Uh, I've had friends that uh, someone in their organization that works for them in treasury management gets an email from the boss or the CEO of the company. And this true story. And it says, wire $50,000 to this account with this wire, uh, you know, all this information. And fortunately, they had some internal checks to where it had to be authorized by somebody else and, and things like that. And they trapped it. But he said it was still close because it's not unusual to send that amount of money in that, in that company. My. It's not unusual to send it to somebody new. It's not unusual for him to request it. And that's happened over and over again. The biggest threat, and the biggest threat is ransomware attacks. Right. And every if you're not familiar with it, which I'd be shocked if you're not, uh, but it's where the attacker gets into the network. They plant, well, they don't even plant a virus. It's not even a virus these days. It uses the Windows Disk Encryption Service to go out and encrypt all the files that it can find on the entire network and then holds them for ransom. You know, you pay the five thousand, fifty thousand, five million dollar fine, and then they'll unencrypt the files for you. Uh, email is the most common way to distribute ransomware attacks, although those can come from uh, drive-by attacks on compromised websites. Uh, there's just any number of different threat vectors that these attacks can come through. All right. So what proactive measures does Kirkham take with its clients to educate them on identifying phishing emails? Another great question. It, the, the biggest thing you can do in your organization, and it's not very expensive, is to implement continuous cybersecurity awareness training along with phishing simulations. Okay, you need to simulate these phishing attacks see how your staff measures up, see mm -hmm. if they need additional coaching, you know, because they fail for a phishing attack. Mm -hmm. And when you go through the training, you'll learn a method like SLAM. If you get an email that you just got a feeling about, right? You know, the hairs are rising on the back of your neck, your little voice, okay. uh, and you go, there's something not right. Well, the SLAM method says scrutinize the sender, scrutinize the links, mm -hmm. scrutinize any attachments and don't open any attachment right, until you yeah. look and see it, see if, see what it is. Mm -hmm. And then look at the message carefully. Only then if you're convinced that it's legitimate, should you open it? If you're a client of ours or with your other security service provider, 
uh, we you just send the email to them and ask them, is this safe to open? We get them every day. And that is you just, you have to stay vigilant, always stay safe. Mm -hmm. If you're not, if you're still not sure, if you looked at all of those things, uh, just send it to your security provider and let them scrutinize it and let you know it's better to be safe than sorry. You know, taking care of problems, we call this boom, right? When a security event occurs, um, that's boom. Now, there's a term, and you're going to hear us talk about this more and more. It's left of boom and right of boom. Left of boom is all of the things, the policies and procedures that you put in place so you don't have the boom. That's to prevent the boom. Okay. Continuous cybersecurity awareness training cuts your risk in half. Okay. That's, that's a fact. That's wow. what the okay. research tells us. Okay. Just that one thing cuts it in half. You want to concentrate on the things up front to prevent it, not worry as much after an event occurs. Now I'm not, I'm not saying the proper application of your thought, your thinking and uh, being proactive with your investment in security, you want to do it up front because the more you spend there, the less likely you're going to have to spend money after an event occurs. Okay. Right. And, and those are typically very expensive. Now, if you're with a company like ours, a, a good managed security services provider, mm -hmm. uh, generally speaking, they're going to cover you on both sides of boom. But if you don't already have a security services provider, when you have that event, solving that problem becomes dramatically more expensive. I mean, by far more money than it would cost to simply invest in keeping it from happening in the first place. Right. Right. Well, those are some great tips, Tom. Thank you for sharing that information with us today. We appreciate your knowledge and uh, thanks for being with us. Yep. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Bye.